Hey, Monkey, it's me, DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, and you're listening to In Your Head Online.com. Don't even think about getting off, or you will feel the best. Well, welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I'm the internet icon, the pride of the pilgrims, handsome Jackie Jones. I'm joined by former WCW World TV champ, WWE Intercontinental champ, PWI Rookie of the Year, marvelous wild man he's so pretty that man from new york city mark marrow how you doing wow what an introduction uh, i'm doing great after that <laughs> oh, excellent excellent uh, and now the interview's over because we ran out of time but uh no the uh you've got the the bad tour coming up uh can you give or maybe it's going on now can you give people an idea of what that is well we, you know we're traveling all over the country uh it's it's bad I play off my old name of johnny b mm-hmm. bad b-a-d-d but it stands for Be Against Destructive Decisions. And we are touring around the country and speaking at schools. We'll probably do close to 300 events this year. And uh, it's about ins- inspiring, empowering students. And, uh, you know, so many kids today are going through the, the um, substance abuse and uh, suicidal thoughts, self-harming. And we, we, we touch base on all those subjects during our, our one-hour presentation. Mm-hmm. When was this something that um, that occurred you occurred to you for to do? Well, you know, I always tell people there's there's two types of people in the world. There's people that say something needs to be done, and then there's a person or people that go out and do something about it. And I was really guilty of always being that person that says, "Why don't they do this about this or do this about that?" And uh, finally, I, I realized I, I have a story, I have a testimony, I have a voice, and I started going out there and speaking my mind and speaking my opinion on this and it just snowballed into over 2000 schools around the country. This is my 11th year presenting at schools. And, um, it's just been joy I've ever experienced. I've never enjoyed anything more than this. Mm -hmm. Now, um, some people like in culture today in society, uh, think things are too PC, but, uh, there's a difference between, you know, someone just playing around with somebody and actually actual bullying. Uh, would you kind of talk about that difference? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we all grew up and called each other names and pushed each other and had sure. fun and stuff, you know, but the bullying is, it's more of a power struggle. It's a constant belittling, hurting, pushing, punching, uh, cyber bullying, you know, uh, day after day, week after week, month after month. And there's some students that endure this year after year. And that's when you really notice that there's some really, um, just abusive behavior, and um, we really try to identify that, too, uh, because kids can be so mean. And then we're seeing more and more kids that, you know, end up taking their life because of being bullied so much. And they just can't take it. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, did you uh, uh, when you were in wrestling, did you uh, see a lot of bullying within wrestling? There's, there's bullying in wrestling. There's bullying in the workplace and schools and you know it's everywhere it's a it's, it's a behavior of some people that just feel it's they're, they're more powerful they want to you know push their will on somebody else but you know look at the role models that our kids are growing up watching today you know we watch tv shows like the the housewives of atlanta or the orange county or something you see adults acting like fools throwing things swearing each other punching each other and these are the the, the, the things the kids watch growing up such a young age and they see that's that's common behavior mm-hmm. now, when you play johnny b bad who i actually was a huge fan of uh it was my f- favorite uh, gimmick of yours but uh it's kind of a you know a feminine character did anyone um did anyone ever uh you know rib you or tease you for, for playing that character uh you know i'm sure there was but you know what it was the funny thing about that character was it was like being an actor, you know, it was so opposite sure. of who I, who I, who I was and am that it was fun. It was fun to just, you know, throw on the, the crazy outfits and the makeup and just go out there and be a crazy man and, and have fun with it. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, not too many people took it too seriously and, uh, you know, and it, but it's, it's kind of funny because I go to schools today. I mean, it's 20, 20, over 20 years since I was Johnny B. Bad. And when I go to schools today, I, uh, people say to me, um, you know, well, who did you, who, what was your name in wrestling? I said, well, I started as Johnny B. Bad. And they go, wasn't 
wasn't he? He goes, you weren't Johnny Depp. That was a black guy. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I said, no, that was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of funny. Yeah, I was going to bring that up because uh, I always thought you were you were African American black guy until uh, you did interviews later on talk about you know uh, I did the character. Did anything weird ever come up about that? Did like uh, people? Did you ever have to kind of if someone asked you about being African American or black? Did you? How did you handle yeah, that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of dance around it. Oh, you know, it, it's it said. It, I would say to go, "Are you black or white?" I'd say, uh-huh. "It don't matter if I'm black or white. Just know I'm a bad man." <laughs> and I just have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, when you first, what did you think when you first heard the Johnny B. Bad theme song? I think it's amazing. So. Uh, you know, I think it was was it Michael P. S. Hayes did that, or was Maybe. part of it. Mm-hmm. So. I, I can't. I'm, I remember they were playing it for me. I, I liked it. I liked it. It had a catchy tune to it, you know, and it was fun to come out to. And, you know, I wanted to make the entrance like a party, you know, having people laughing and smiling and, you know, it, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, another wrestler does a lot of good for people, and that was uh, DDP. And I, I thought uh, your feud with DDP was really what uh, showcased both of you guys was like, uh, I think, you know, elevated both of you guys. How did that come about? Like, who put you guys together? And it wasn't something... Like you guys talked about was, backstage, was, like you know, we want to go out there and really prove prove ourselves. Yes, it was our idea. It was our idea. We were we were such good friends, you know. We've always been great friends. This day, we're great friends, and we really wanted to, um, you know, we we were working out together down at the power plant, and uh, so we, we decided, hey, we we'll really work well together. Why don't we put on um, you know, some matches? And we talked. We brought it to the uh, the higher ups there, and uh, they decided to put us on pay per view and started going good. And we had a we kind of came up with our own little ideas on the feud and um it was a it was a lot of fun i really get you know the guy was such a hard worker and mm-hmm. he brought out the best in everybody and and uh, i know people may make fun of it or because he was so into you know being diamond dallas page but man I, there's one guy you just don't bet against and that's ddp mm-hmm. and uh the idea i know like at the time some people uh, we're against the idea of uh, quote unquote scripting your matches or going over them beforehand. Uh, now it seems like I think that's kind of the norm. But uh, what was that dynamic like, and did anyone you know have a problem with that? Um, you know, only because you know DDP and I started late in our careers. You know, we we were kind of I started at thirty one, he started at thirty five, mm-hmm. and uh, so you you know you didn't want to make mistakes out there, and you you know you didn't have all those years of learning like many other top performers. Um, I, you know, I liked going over stuff with DDP and except when he called me at three o'clock in the morning to go over it, I didn't like that. <laughs> right. but, but, uh, you know what it, it, it did. We, we, you know, we both learned and we got better as we went, as it went along. Yeah. Uh, I, I know Mick Foley in his uh, book always kind of, kind of picks on you really. It's always kind of a, Dad, have you read Mick Foley? I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, do you have any, yes. uh, do you have any, uh, thoughts on that? <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny. Cause I love Mick Foley. I think he's, uh-huh. a, he's just a great guy and I don't take no hard feelings against it. And, um, you know what it, you know, he once said to me something I thought was really cool. He goes, Mark, sometimes I took myself too seriously back then, but we're good friends. And I applaud him for the, the charity work he does. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I ran into him a couple months ago at, at a hotel in New York and we got to chat for a little while and uh, man, I just, I just think the world of him. So I have nothing, nothing bad to say about it. I never did. I think he's a great guy. Yeah. I guess sometimes if you put something like in print too, it's there forever. So, uh, even if it's just like one little yeah, thought of he, his, it's, it's written, you know, people know it. I don't know. You know, I, in, in my life, um, you know, Forgiveness is so important in life. You know, you can't hold grudges. You can't live your life with animosity or bitterness or resentment towards people. And I think that's what, even though people do make mistakes or I made a ton of them, you know, and I only hope people have forgiven me and, and moved on from it on things that I've done in my life. But um, I have no animosity towards anybody in, in the business or, you know, I have no quarrels or qualms with anybody. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you talk about uh, having substance problems uh, from wrestling. Uh, well, it wouldn't your time in wrestling. Do you think? Do you think that's something that's um, was hard to uh, not have w- within wrestling? You know what? There's there's guys that 
that wrestled most of their life without substance abuse problems and things like that. And, um, you know, I, I fault myself for that, for not being stronger and standing up for what I should have done. instead of just wanting to party all the time and made some horrible mistakes. And I think I could have had a much more successful career if I wasn't doing some of the stupid things I did. But you know what? The, the amazing thing is that all the paths I've taken in my life have led to where I am right now. And, um, you know, I'm, and I'm blessed. I really am. Um, I, I'm living an incredible life. I'm doing exactly what I love doing. I, I've never experienced the joy I'm feeling now helping, helping other people, you know? So mm-hmm. it's, um, all the past led to here. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Heenan uh, recently passed away. Um, did you have any inter- interaction with him? I'm not sure the uh, timeline if he was. Oh, in WCW. sure. I mean, yeah. Oh, he was in, he was in WCW and he, he, he just hilarious on the, on the mic. I mean, everybody knows that, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. but he had some, you know, funny things that he would you know talk about johnny be bad or stuff like that but his, his commentary was always really <laughs> just just classic and yeah. I, I of course i never took him seriously because that's that's who he was of course sure in fact i think it would be better it's kind of putting you over if bobby he makes fun of you exactly <laughs> yeah but uh actually one of my uh i think uh an unheralded guy was uh, max Payne, who i had on the show years ago i was very proud of that uh, what was it like working with Max Payne and the infamous time when he tried with the Bad Blaster? Um, you know, Max is a great guy too, and and he was he was really good for a big man. You know, mm-hmm. he uh, really took care of you in the ring, and and uh, you know, I I it was it was a nice little feud I had him with, with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so your website's uh, thinkpause uh, dot org. Um, what are some of your upcoming uh, uh, locations? Well, we're just leaving uh, Chicago right now. We head back to Orlando. We're going to be in Miami on Monday, Fort Lauderdale, or um, Fort Myers on Tuesday. And then we fly off to, gosh, where am I going next? Uh, Dallas? Yeah, Dallas. My uh, my, my um, assistant that travels with me um, just reminded me where we're going. <laughs> uh-huh. Now, you have a video with Hulk Hogan, which I think a lot of people would be surprised just if you think of, you know, this probably like he's even high school he's probably like six two or something uh and play guitar and all these things that would be uh bullied uh, but he says he was bullied in in school so it's not always someone who's uh you know uh, physically weak or or weird or anything no and, and hulk was a great guy man he was so open about it too and i just found that really amazing i spent like three days with him you know and doing different things with him and and really, we just re- reconnected. We haven't seen each other in years. And it was just like reconnecting with him and hanging out with him. It was just wonderful. He's just really a down-to-earth, fun guy to be around. Great sense of humor and, you know, big heart. A lot of people don't realize how big that guy's heart is, man. How he, he, you know, everywhere we went, he took the time for people. And even when people, like, interrupted us or, you know, talk, you know, he, he was just for people. And I was just really taken back by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of big hearts, uh, Juju be on our Facebook page. Uh, she wants to know how your heart's doing. I'm doing great, man. I have a new valve. <laughs> they fixed my aorta. I got a few more years left here, man. Are you kidding me? Well, that's very good. <laughs> I'm still a bad man. I got a bad heart. <laughs> uh, would there be any chance we'd ever see you Bob, back in the ring? Uh, no, no, I have no, no desire for that. I, I, like I said, I love what I do now and, you know, it's, uh, it's the joy of my life. So. Yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, Rob, there's a lot of questions. We won't get to all, but, uh, Robbie Scar on the Facebook, he wants to know, uh, well, what did you think of Steve Blackman? Oh, Steve was a super guy, man. I, I, I always liked hanging out with Steve. Like we always have nice talks in the locker room and he was a really nice person. Um, you know, nothing but good stuff about Steve. Good memories with Steve. Mm-hmm. And uh, Casey wants to know if you have any stories with Teddy Long. Teddy Long, oh, that, that was he was one of the most the most fun guys to travel with, and uh, we used to, you know, because it was so funny because we used to do the uh, uh, oh hush Johnny, oh hush Teddy, <laughs> and uh, we found us doing that all the time, you know. But uh, he was a super guy. I only wish we would have stayed together longer. Uh, this is Eric Bischoff. You know, controversy creates cash. You know what else? You're listening to in your had. Yes, uh, you know when Teddy and I were together, it was uh, it was pretty dynamic. He was a lot of fun to work with, and 
And I think they cut that program too short with Teddy and I. I think we should have been uh, together longer as my manager. And I think it would have been, um, I don't know, I just think it was a real good, we, we had a good connection, man. Good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big, uh, big fan. Of t- the good thing about Teddy Long, he's, uh, when he was uh, like a heel manager, I thought he was very like hateable. And then when he was like, uh, I couldn't even picture him being like a, like a likable guy. And then he was general manager later on. He was like so nice. I couldn't imagine him being like a, like a hateable guy. So he, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very he weird. Really? He really transitioned. Well, he, he became such a great talker on the microphone. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just really stepped up his game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so it's uh, the B A double D bad tour B against destructive decisions. I go think pause.org. And I want to thank you uh, for taking this time. I know you're at the airport, so you have a lot of time. Maybe sometime we could get you back on and talk a little longer. But uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Jack, you take care of yourself. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. This is Eric Bischoff. You know, controversy creates cash. You know what else? You're listening to In Your Head.